Hello, everybody, and welcome along once more to Cairnhill Cabin in County Cabin in Ireland. Um, my name is Margaret McKenna. Uh, today, I am I'm doing a monochrome painting. I did a live stream there a while ago, and unfortunately, I got interrupted, and I thought I'd continued it, but I, I didn't. It, um, I only got a little bit of it on it, so I said I'll, I'll redo it. It's not too big a it's not too big a painting to do. It's quite a fast painting to do. So um, I'd like you to be able to have an opportunity to work with me right through the whole from beginning to end rather than getting interrupted. And this time I'm on a laptop and um, yeah, I think it's, it should work this time. Uh, technology is something really sometimes that drives you mad. But anyway, here we go. So the painting I'm doing today is of a tree. And I saw this on a post on Facebook and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. And it was um, a photograph of a landscape, which was bigger than this. It had more trees and bushes in the background. And I decided, yeah, well, why not? I think that would be a very good opportunity to do it as a, um, a painting to show you a little bit about light and shade without sort of like the complication, as it were, of um, color. Sometimes color, when you try and deal with light and shade, can make it a little bit more complicated. So I thought it'd be a nice way to do it with uh, just a black and white. So literally all the colors we're using is black and white, are black and white. So I, if you have any questions, hopefully I'd actually be able to see you this time. I'd be able to see the paint questions because the last time if there was any questions or anything I couldn't see. So this time I should be able to see. So basically, as I say, we're going to work with black and white. So we're going to work on I mean, the, the, the literally black and white for the sky. So we're going to start with the dark gray for the very top of the sky. So literally the two colors, black and white mixed. And we're going to work it. And I'm just going to put a line roughly about here on the page. And this is roughly where your line is going to be for your um, horizon line, as it were. OK, so we're going to start with the dark, dark sky, first of all. And the reason I really wanted to do this live stream again is because the focus of the painting was the tree. And unfortunately, none of the part of the tree came on it. So it kind of really was a bit unfortunate. So here we are. We're going to work our way through the painting. So we're working from a dark ray, gradually working and feeding in more light into it, which means more white because as I say, it's only black and white. So we're going to work this right through here like this. Just like that. So it's going to be literally working, it's getting lighter and lighter as you get to the bottom to the to this line here. I like that. OK. And I've got, as I say, you can watch this back afterwards and I'll put it up on YouTube as well. So you'll be able to see it. And I hold your brush nice and light high up on, on the top of it. Um, don't hold it down with a pencil because it makes it much more um, much uh, harder to use. It makes it much more tense. Your body's tense, you're tense, and much more likely to make mistakes with that way, actually. So I'm adding a good lot of white at the bottom, as you can see. See, just a lot of white, just gradually working it into it like this here. And there we have basically this is our, our basic sky. And now all we have to do is add some of the, some uh, clouds. So for the clouds, I'm just using white. But what I'm doing is, and I put the white, I almost take it off the brush. So it's very, very light. And I use the brush much more, almost on its side. And I just, but as I said, and I said in the previous live stream is, what my man was an artist used to say, whisper it along. And whisper it used to mean, was just barely touch it along the page like that. So we're just barely tipping it along. It's almost like you don't, you nearly don't feel it on the page. It's just a very light, almost laying it on it like that. You can come back afterwards and put a little bit lighter if we want and more white on it. We're also going to put a little bit coming like this. Because it's sort of like we're going to have the, it's like the, the somebody often watch the, the, the clouds, they kind of drift off into the, away from you, sort of almost diagonally away over the sky. So you can imagine the overhead and it's going off the distance. It gives great distance into the picture, too, when you do it like this. Um, and those of you who were able to see the other previous live stream, you could always catch up. At least you'll be able to see the, you know, you'll be able to see the, the tree bit later on in this bit that I couldn't, that I unfortunately didn't get on the last live stream. So here we go. We're going to put a little bit and just work through this really quickly. Uh, it doesn't take too long. And again, as I mentioned in the last, last live stream, is watch that you don't get into patterns and lines too much. You can have lines, but if they all go the same direction, it's very easy to kind of get um, 
to work exactly this you know to keep it sort of an order in a picture that isn't actually in nature this is sort of a randomness about nature sometimes we're inclined to miss when we're doing in the pictures because we we try to put order in our pictures too much so just keep an eye on it that we don't kind of make the lines all parallel or something like that because it looks can look a little bit odd sometimes you have to stand away from a picture and realize it i've often done that myself so it's very easy to done so i'm just going to bring a little bit of that and a little bit more down here. A little, little bit, just a flicker like that. So I've kind of got, that's kind of really like our, a little bit of our clouds here. So now the reason it's good to have the black and white because it's, it's a very good way of getting just our, I, I was showing the light and shade without, as I say, any color in, in the way as it were. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do some of my bushes along. So a little bit of a dark, I'm going to go for quite a dark gray to start with. So it's going to be quite dark. And I'm going to just take it along this line here now. I'm just going to see, I'm going to use a different style of painting this time. It's not backwards, and it's going to be almost like a dabbing effect. Dab, of, dab it across like that. Up and down slightly like that. And it's a fairly dark, good lot of black in this picture, this in the paint this time. So you can see that there. So there we go, like that. And now we can come with a small brush and we're going to go in with a slightly lighter grey this time. So we're going to add more white into it, a little more white. And we're going to come back with our little dabs across. Just start in the middle. You can start anywhere. Now the light is coming from the right hand side. So each, if you imagine each of these little sections is, is a section of trees or bushes and shrubbery. So the right hand side is going to have more light on it than the left. So each little bunch of little bump as it were is another shrub or another tree. And each of those is going to have a bit more light on the right hand side. There'll also be light on the left, but more light on the right hand side. So we'll dig a little bit in here, just add a little more white. And we'll drag it through it like that. And don't forget, you can look back at this later on, or and also I'll be putting it up on YouTube as well. Um, and if for any of you who doesn't know, I'm doing a, a kids' live stream tomorrow is Tuesday. Yes, I have to stop and think at the moment. And uh, tomorrow's Tuesday, and I'll do one at 12 o'clock. And we're doing a little ladybird or a ladybug, depending. Some people call it little ladybirds, some call them ladybugs, and on a flower. So that's what I'm going to do. And that is a suggestion by one of the children as well. So now I'm going to add a bit more white to this here in place, just to have a good little extra left, it'll brighten up. A little tip along with the white. Small brush I'm using here. And it's like, like it's little dabs, little random little dabs. So they're kind of little, very small, very fine little action with the with the hand, like little tip, 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 tip. So it's not like dots. It's not like very individual dots that can almost kind of sometimes end up looking a little bit like measles. So you don't want that kind of effect. So a little more, little tip, tip, tips like that. Tip, 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 tips. Now we're going to get a little bit. Uh, just a few little lines coming down, like as if they're trunks of the little little um, branches that are just catching the light. A little bit of white on the brush. I don't have too much of them because it's only like they're, they're mostly, a lot of them would be in the shadow. So they're just kind of catching the light in places. Right now, make sure you get a little more white. Yeah. A little more grey in there. And I'm going to come back with a little bit of the dark because you work backwards and forwards from light to dark all the time. So I'm going to put a bit more dark going through this as well. You don't kind of just say, oh, that's one section done and now I'm finished. I work from dark to light and light to dark all the time. You know, or in the same with colours. You don't always work in sort of that's it, I'm finished and set in stone. This is not set in stone till till you're actually happy with it. Um, just want to put a bit more here like this. I've got a mixture of two colours on the brush here. Which is quite nice to have sometimes because you can kind of like get a nice kind of a 
two tone effect coming along on it, which is works quite well. Now, so that kind of gives an overall idea of the background. And what I'm going to do next is get a nice bigger brush here, and I'm going to bring a sort of a very light grey colour. First of all, I'm going to just mark in roughly where my foreground is because the tree is on a little hill like that. So I'm going to put a really light grey in the background, almost a white. In fact, I'm going to go whiter than that because I'm going to get some more white. I'm running out of white now at the moment, so I'll get more white in, in another couple of days. Delivery, so looking forward to getting my paints, which would be great to be able to paint properly again. So, okay, so here we go with white across here like this. And as you see, it's like sort of a light grey I'm doing. So I want to make sure that's sort of straightish. Okay, fairly light, even lighter again. I put a bit more white on top of that. I'm going to bring it right down, almost down to that line there. Now, okay, and now I'm going to put a, quite a dark shadow behind that hill because there is quite a dark shadow. So I'm going to come out from that hill like. And you notice how all the time I'm holding my brush quite high up in my hand. I'm going to bring it across like that. And I'm bringing it crossways, giving it out, going to sort of horizontal kind of across the across the um, page. Like that. Give it a look and see where I'm going with this. So I give it like that. There we go now. And now we're going to work on the foreground. So the foreground, I'm actually going to go quite a dark shadowy colour initially. And I'm going to do it slightly up and down this time. So it's going to be very similar to the shade that I have above it. But because it's nearer to me, I'm going to actually allow it to be a little more like um, grass. So I'm going to, even though it, at this stage you might say, well, it doesn't really matter if you go backwards and forwards because you can't really see the difference. But actually you do actually, because sometimes it's a little bit, it's not always exactly the same shade. So even just doing it like this, initially we'll give it that and feeling that it's grass even for yourself you sort of know what you're doing it's like you get a mindset of what you're actually doing so here we go so I'm going to bring it in across like that like there now I'm going to come back with my smaller brush now Let's give that a bit of a drying and I'm going to come in with a much lighter color so a lot more white into it this time and we're going to come across that that my ridge as it were, where I've got where I've put my, and I'm going to work from the backwards to the foreground. I'm going to just work through here like this. Oop, that's going very, very white. I say if I have, if I've been do, I did this live stream earlier on. Unfortunately, it got interrupted. So. I thought it'd be, it was a good picture to demonstrate a little bit of the light and shade. So I thought it'd be a good idea to just do it over again because it's a quick little picture. It's not a difficult one, a nice one to do. And it'd be nice to be able to see because I wanted you really to see the tree especially. And unfortunately, it got interrupted the last time. So I think it would be really good if we could um, get you to see the, me doing the tree. Which, of course, is the whole focus of the picture to start with. So what I'm doing is, you see, I'm putting out this... The, the, the light is actually the, the dark is taking um is coming in through the light you can see it you can actually see it through with the with the light it's, it's the white i'm putting on top i'm just putting more or less a white layer on top very light gray and it's but you can see it's mixing in with the under layer which gives it that nice sort of a two-tone effect on it and it's lots of little strokes mainly working through from the back to the foreground because it gives that you're layering one layer on top of the next then because obviously if grass is near you it will be on top of the grass that's sort of behind you as it were or behind the, the, the four grass so we kind of get it literally gradually working towards you always work from the nearly always will work from the back to the front unless there's a definite reason why i don't that doesn't happen too often sometimes in um palette knife paintings i mightn't necessarily do that rule Yep, there's a bit of a stroke in the other way. And what I really want to get to now is this tree because the tree is the bit that, as I say, broke the down in the last transmission. So we're going to get there now in a minute. Okay. 
now see what i'm doing just bringing a lot and i'm going to come in with a darker shade going through this as well because it's kind of a dark shade goes through it as well you can see here like this now So you're getting that feeling of grass, you see. The layers is grass. It's like grass coming through like this. Now, we're going to get to the point now in a second of doing the tree. The tree now is really the best, the focus of this picture. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with a middle sort of a light gray to start it okay so it's a bit again black and white it's all black and white this is a monochrome picture um so i'm going to bring it up now so we're going to come up about here and we're going to come up to maybe about here so i'm just literally going to work my way right through those could add a bit more white into it and i'm going to work it across like this and you can see how rough i'm doing it in the beginning i'm just literally Working out my main branches like that. I'm going to bring in one across over here, like oh, one across maybe like this here. This needs maybe exactly the same as the previous picture. The picture's up on Facebook anyway, if you want to have a look at it. You can see um, the actual picture that I'm doing it from. And we have another one. Like here, I'll do another one now coming up here, and then there's this one as I say up here, but I'm going to put another one off it like that. Another little one here, another one up. And I'm just literally doing it initially with in, in, in a very light, very light gray color, and another one like that. So now there's my tree, the basic tree there, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to literally come back in with a dark, a black to start with. So I'm going to get my black and I'm going to bring it down. Remember the light, the right hand side of the picture is where the light is coming from. So we're going to work on the left hand side of the tree. And we're going to go really black initially because the shadow is going to be quite dark at this point. I'm going to drag it down like that. And I'm going to just work around my bits of my branches. So like there, come down the left to this one here, like that. We're going to come down the left of this one, all the way down like that, just to the join, just where it actually joins in. It's going to be fairly stark at the moment. It's going to be literally black, white, or black and gray at the moment. Um, and then we're going to have one like that i'm just going to watching where um, where my where my two branches are overlapping with each other and then we're going to come back up here as well like so we'll do one up here like that and we're going to come down the side of this that's my masking tape i have just stuck onto the this onto the top of it here so it might take a while on the masking tape i'm just doing this on paper now it, it's not even acrylic paper actually it's just ordinary paper but it's actually working out too, not too bad acrylic paper better of course really but um let's get us new supplies of acrylic paper in so now we've got that tree there like this i'm going to put a little bit dark here like that and i'll put a little bit underneath so we've seen the break i'm bringing out the branches on the you can see gradually you'll see it coming together now on the left hand side here like that okay so i'm just really establishing where everything is now there you can see it's quite a stark contrast at the moment so i'm going to come in with my middle gray so i'm going to add more white into my black so i'm going to have a middle gray so it's all black and white so there's no other colors involved and we're just going to run down so the edge if you can imagine where the edge of my black is so it's almost like it's going to melt into my um it's going to melt into my into my other gray that i have underneath oh that's a bit too light so i'm going to just get a middle a middle gray here it's not quite 
as light as the other one. I'm very gentle on this now. I'm just going to bring this across here because that's going to be in front of that. So now I'm just going to, and there's a dark section in the middle of this tree. This tree has got a really dark sort of shadowed bit coming up here. That section there is quite shadowed and it's going to come up a little bit into the middle of the tree like that. Now I'm going to go start going back with my white now at the moment and we'll gradually work it back. So I'm going to get the white here. I might put more. And I'm going to start bringing out these branches and making them much whiter on the right because remember the light is coming from the right hand side. It's quite a strong sunlight. So we're just going to get nice and you can make it quite you can actually make it quite thick on the brush at this point you know you can leave a little lump of it actually on the brush but I'm actually going quite um gentle at the same time I'm going to add a bit more shadow I'm going to say wrong color I'm going to put white out instead of black but a real quite bit across. So I'm afraid to go make it really, oh, there's a big lump came out there. That's not, I'm going to drift that along and I just turn my brush and you allow the actual to make it almost let it three dimensional on the page. So allow there to be a thickness of paint on it. Don't necessarily have to have it really thin. It's much nicer to have a real thickness of your paint. So I don't even mind there's a bit of a blob of it comes on the brush. It's to control the blob. So you just hold your brushes say really nice and far back. And it's the fact that it's slightly wet is good because it's allowing it to drift in. And I would say I'm letting this be really, really thick on the brush because it's giving us that lovely, um, almost like a bark feeling, you know, onto it, which gives, which makes it, um, you know, you kind of think of what you're actually painting when you're painting. You know, think, well, what am I actually doing? It's not just a color on a page and I want to get a color. Think like it's wood. It has, it has texture. There's a certain, you know, a feel about it. Like just like the grass, it has that kind of a, you know, up and down, like it'll stick it out of the ground. Watch where you're going with these. So I'm going to bring one. And you don't even have to do the whole way along. You can hit and miss it a little bit. And see, the further you actually have your hands back on the brush, better. I twist the brush. Often I twist the brush in my hand like that. Like. The reason I do that is it gets the paint off the brush really nicely and it kind of leaves that little, you know, you can see the ridges of the paint coming on it and it's a lovely, yeah, it has a really nice feel of texture. You can get like that. Like. So feel that. You can feel it in it almost. A bit down into that. No, it's another little branch here I'm going to be in. I'll have it there with that. I'm actually going to put a little bit, a tiny bit of dark on that, on the far side of that. Just gives it a nice little... grey going down into it. So I'm literally just putting a little bit of light and shade because I want to get that shadowed bit in the middle of the tree. But it's kind of shadowed, but it's not all the same shade exactly. You have slightly different shades going through it. And the fact that you have a little bit of the dark bit here coming out there gives it that sort of three-dimensional feeling. It makes it feel like the tree is that it's actually coming out towards you then when you get that actually extra bit of extra bit of shadow into it. I think about an extra little bit of light underneath like that. See that little bit of light there? It's like it's catching. The light is just, it's just catching the light there. 
you now did a flicker. And I'm actually going to darken, I guess this is the last time is when I was trying to do the live, the live stream, is darken this background here a bit. And this is where, you notice I'm going down and then I'm dragging it back because I want to just contrast nicely with that background. A lot of this picture is about contrast. You know, that's why light and shade is really, it works really well in a monochrome. Just give it that little extra bit there. And I'm going to come back down now with a little bit of extra black. Just to really emphasize that black there. And just make that tree really stand out nicely. I'm going to put a little bit there and I'm going to put a bit of white on that. And a half tone. We just blend the two of them together. And I'm going to put a little flicker of white just along there as well. You'd go on forever doing branches on this, really, to be honest, because, I mean, it, you know, it, it, this, I'd say it's like a dead tree because it doesn't have too many branches on it. So it's like a tree that, you know, it doesn't, a lot of them have probably snapped off. Because you have a tree that's sort of alive, the chances are you're going to have so many little branches that you could literally spend forever doing it. So this looks more like one that's maybe been hit by lightning or something like that in the past. Okay, and so then we're just going to put one or two little flickers here like that. And we get a nice, and we get the dark, I might just put another dark bit in here just to emphasize the shadow in there. You see, you can go back and you can emphasize the little flickers of shadows that you think might work. Oh, that's got a bit of light there, so I'm just going to put an extra bit of shadow in there. And I think that's about it. I think we have, oh yeah, there's one little thing I want to do. I want to come back in and I'm just going to put a little bit of light and shade on the actual, oh, what happened there? A little bit of light and shade. A little bit of light and shade on the it's going a bit strange there now it's flicking a little bit god knows what's wrong now um a little bit of light and shade just in here um like that so it's because remember it is it isn't um and a bit more white here as well in places sometimes the camera might be flicking a little bit backwards and forwards i don't know hopefully it's not too bad a few little Yeah. So it just gives a bit of texture to the ground of the background because remember it's a field, it's not going to be all exactly the same colour. This would actually be green in reality, green grass, but because of black and white obviously it's going to look kind of grey. So really that's basically it. As you say, we have the main thing to remember is the contrast. You can work from the dark sort of shadow down to the sort of lighter grey for the um for the sky. And then you've got it using your brush very, very lightly, almost like a dry brush on the clouds and um, whispering it along, as I say, really, really lightly. And then also um, basically we're just going to get the, this background here nice and smooth across. Um, but we can put little bits of grey in, in each side to try and make it a little bit more um, realistic so it's not all the one shade. Contrasting the darkness of the shadows, making these really, really dark here in, on the tree, contrasting with the really light on the right hand side because it's uh, the sun is coming from the light right. And then you have your grass here, and the grass um, to try and give it a little texture, the up and down movements rather than having it straight across. So basically, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I apologies for my earlier live stream that didn't um, show the tree because it broke. Uh, the interruption uh, in the live stream happened. So, um, yeah, so next time we'll do another one, uh, hopefully next Monday with no interruptions. And uh, so please, thanks for uh, tuning in again. And as I say, you can watch this later on. If you have any questions, please, please don't forget to put them in the comments. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer them. And also, if you could, um, if you could just share it, it'd be great. Um, that'd be fantastic. I know it's doing some strange jumpy things here, so I hope that is not coming out in the live stream. Um, anyhow, uh, thanks again for uh, joining me and I'll see you again. Uh, bye bye.